It is Akhalsikhe Kassam. Akhalsikhe. Akhalsikhe is word combination. New Kassam. Georgia New Kassam. Maybe you know that there are more than 100 new castles all over the world. Maybe each country has its own new Kassam. The name sounds in different ways, in different languages. Yes, in Georgian it is Akhalsikhe, in Russian it is Nova Kriepas. Polish people call it uh, Novi Zamok, uh, in English it is Newcastle. There is the alliance, the, the union of such cities. Uh, there are the similar names, and the office is located in Great Britain. Uh, there is also Newcastle, and the chairman is David Faulkner, my uh, very best friend. Uh, he uh, discovered, he joined these cities together, he made this organization, and in 2010, uh, this new castle was officially, yes, uh, invited uh, uh, to incorporate uh, in the system. Uh, documents were signed here, so now we are the part of this biggest union, and we have beautiful tradition, you know. In each two years, one new castle meets the members from other uh, new castles. Three years ago, we had this big meeting here. Yeah, in our fortress, and this year, as far as I know, we are invited to Australia. As you yes. Now let's go up and continue our speech. So let's begin from here. Uh, city of Akhalsikhe. This province was created and developed by Georgian kings. Bagrationi, the Georgian family name. Bagrationi, and um, during many centuries, it was Georgian province. But in the 16th century, Ottoman Empire, nowadays Turkey, they conquered this land, they took it from, from Georgia, and under the name Gurjistan, lost from Georgia, became part of Turkey. You oh. know what uh, Gurjistan, this word, means in Turkey? It is land of Georgians. Very strange way to call us, because it is not Georgian province, it was not Georgian province, but Turks still called us part of Georgia. Maybe because they never lived here, only Georgians. Different mm. categories of, jo of Georgian families. Uh, Orthodox Georgians, and it is not strange because Georgia converted to Christianity in the early times, exactly in the fourth century. Mm. Well, uh, and uh, um, the time it was total Christianity. Only. Mm -hmm. Only in the 11th century, the Christian Church was split up into Orthodox Christian Church and Catholic, Catholic Christian Church. Yes, we um, formed as Orthodox country. But when Turks came, they made Georgians to change the religion into Islam. 
and part of Georgians, including the including the rulers of the land, they they really converted to Islam to keep their power, their property, everything they had, okay. including uh, the rulers of the land. Uh, including the uh, feudal lords who, who reigned that place, just any Georgian uh, surname again, they became Muslim and they continued being rulers of the land. Uh, well, uh, in the part Georgians, they converted to Catholicism because Catholic Christian church was uh, stronger from the time and it could dictate something to Turkey. He had to take it into their consideration. That's why those Georgians who became Catholic Georgians, uh, they lived here more safely than Orthodox uh, Georgians. The real picture of this land up to the beginning of the 19th century, exactly 1828, the, the battle, the war between two biggest empires, Turkey and Russia. Yes, to divide Georgia again, once again to divide Georgia. And uh, in a result, uh, this Gurdjistan still was given to Georgia. It was mm -hmm. liberated from Turkey, but Georgia itself became part of Russia. So it was passing from empire to empire, yes? In 1828, we are part of Russia and this fortress, now we are having our trip here, uh, this fortress became the uh, military city. It was occupied by Georgian and Russian military forces, military armies. In the lower part, you have to go back after the trip and where you bought your tickets. It was hospital and this was the city for military people. And the situation of military city continued here up to the uh, middle of the 20th century. Only in 1977, the armies left the place and it became museum. Today, this is the museum in the open here. Uh, the tickets that you have affords you to visit this museum, this open museum. Uh, but if you have time, you may take uh, other uh, extra tickets to visit the other museum. Okay. They close the museum. It is History Museum of San Tzhejawaheti region, the National Museum of Georgia. There you will see uh, different stages of uh, humankind development, Stone Age, Bronze, uh, Iron, uh, Antique Age, your decision. Uh, in 2011, mm -hmm. recently, uh, this uh, open museum, it was restored, it was renovated. It was a government project to renovate, <coughs> to renovate old historical monuments all over Georgia. That's why we look like this now, this wonderful garden. Uh, winter has its beauty, yes? <laughs> so fresh air, uh, snow, and so on and so on. Uh, but summer has its beauty as well. That's why I invite you to visit us in summer and to see the other beauty of this. Uh, the beauty of the plants we are having here and on the wall. This is a fragment of the tower. It stands here since the 9th century. It is the oldest one. And it states the fact that about four Christian churches were located within the fortress. Can you guess four churches uh, in the fortress? Inside, yes, yeah? inside. Yeah. Okay. How how huge the fortress was? Yes. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. All of yeah. All of these churches were destroyed by Turks when they came here. Okay. And now one of the churches is uh, renewed. You see this uh, one. Um, it is Church of Saint George, Saint Georgi. Uh, it is open. You may go inside. Just have a look what's happening there. But officially, it is not active church. The place for tourists. Too many people okay. come here. Here uh, from different points of the universe, from different countries. Yes, yeah. uh, people of different confessions. Not only Christians. That's yeah, why that's carry true. out any kind of religious service is impossible here. Uh, and besides, Akhaltsikhe is a very small city. No, very, very, very small. And the biggest number of population, twenty thousand people. They are the cities where more than 15 and 20 million people live. And we are only 20,000 uh, uh, and not only Georgians live here. Russians, Ukrainian, Polish people, Greeks, Armenians, Hebrew, and we all have our temple, we all have our church. We have active Georgian Orthodox churches, uh, Georgian Catholic monastery built in the 13th century, uh, Armenian Gregorian Christian Church, Jew, um, Hebrew synagogue. And now I'm taking you to show our 
church, mosque. I will explain why church and why mosque. Yes, it's very interesting history. When you uh, when you then uh, go back uh, down to meet your uh, driver, you may go inside uh, and have a look. Fortress because you see many many interesting things. Uh, you see, there was the typical Georgian architecture. I mean the bell tower and the church. Okay. Typical for Georgia, namely in 9th centuries. That is Georgia. It is Russian. You see this wonderful white building construction, oh. wooden building. You see this one, Fontaine. It is Russian. Uh, to show the trace of Russian culture here. Uh, when in the 19th century we became, we became part of Russia, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, this province, exactly Bakuriani, uh, Borjomi, and later Abastumani, they became the residences for Russian royal family, Romanovs. Mm -hmm. uh, the Romanovs who used to arrive here to rest, to live for a while. Uh, uh, they used to build the buildings typical for their culture, maybe to fill their homeland close to the that's why on these provinces you may see such beautiful uh, fountains and Yeah, it has pavilions. a difference. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there is a Spanish element of this marble corridor. Mm. I recommend you take photos there. Uh, because it's very slick. Because it's marble, yeah? Well, this is Byzantine style. You see this church mosque. Yes. Ottoman Empire, this beautiful Eastern style of the wall. So we have everything. You see here the Europe <laughs> yeah. and the Asia, because it is true. It is crossroad, you know. Uh, and through this land, via this region, Georgia had economical trade links to the other countries. And the mix of different peoples and cultures always existed here. And this mix today is not created according to this uh, different uh, cultural styles and forms. Now we are going to the Chinese yes. Yeah. This is Ottoman Empire. You know, uh, this is the uh, the yard for harem, for for beloved women. Georgian rulers, they converted to Islam. Mm -hmm. They were called Pasha. Pasha is the Muslim title of the ruler, and Pasha had right to have four legal wives right. and great number of beloved women. How okay. happy they were! <laughs> Most of our visitors, they say that the main purpose why Georgian men decided to become Muslim was this moment. Here, you know where now we are. It was a special space special room for meeting secret guests and uh, carrying out the secret conversation, dialogues. Mm -hmm. It is underground. This is underground? Yes, it's underground. Uh, it has very thick walls, stone walls. And now if we close the window and the door, we may speak about anything. Nobody will hear us from outside. And that's why the rulers, Pasha, of this uh, province, they, they met their secret guests, namely here. In the, that's why it is authentic room, it is original room. It was here before restoration. It was restored on the walls. You see this beautiful modern design, but this wooden design is taken from the original. It is Turkish chichen. Turkish chichen means flower. But very often, Muslim Georgians, who were forced to change their religion, they used such design in their houses, but they used to put Christian crosses among okay. these ornaments, and it was done in a way that it was not visible from the other side. Now let us see. You see this circles, squares, but crosses. Okay. Okay. A cross. Okay. Yes. And this is Georgian balcony. Of course, now it is decorative style to show some uh, some elements of our houses for our visitors for our. Uh, foreign visitors. Uh, such balconies, they must be outside and uh, to keep different materials. Even there were the beds for young boys. Uh, the boys uh, had right to sleep 
uh, in the open uh, space. Uh, summer, of course. In yes. And uh, as it is very cold here, and you feel this cold now. See this fireplace because all our houses had such fireplaces mm -hmm. to heat the, uh, their house. Yes. Now let's move to other place. Uh, later you may come back here. See everything in detail to take photos and so on. Oh, right. Now I'm taking you. on the foundation of the Christian church. But this church was destroyed by Turks when they came here. Of course, one religion comes and could not retain other religion. Uh, to be? Yeah, that's true. Yeah? They changed something, yes. Uh, and uh, all the way in the second half of the 18th century, Georgian Muslim ruler uh, at last decided to build the mosque. He had to do it, and he did it. But for the construction of a uh, uh, Muslim mosque, he used the model of Hagia Sophia Church from Constantinople. Constantinople, it is Byzantine Empire. For the first time, it was the place for Christianity. Christianity began there and spread to other places. But when Turks came and conquered Byzantine, Byzantine was turned into Turkey. Constantinople was changed into Istanbul, uh, and uh, Hagia Sophia considered as Muslim mosque, mm -hmm. not church. That's why this Hagia Sophia was built here because it has flexible, very soft construction and very easy to change in other way. Uh, Ahmed Pasha Jaqeli, Georgian Muslim ruler, was punished for his Christian ideas. But in 1829, when it is still Georgian province, when it is still Christian place, this mosque was turned into Christian church. Wow. You know, they have opened this wall and this axis, this altar was added to it. This is Christian place. Christians okay. come here to bless. Uh, and you see the place for putting the Bible or gospel. Yeah. Yes, this, this stone. Yes. Well, so it was church, and then it was mosque, mosque. <laughs> then, then again it was church, but when Soviet Union in 1920, they Russia. Not only Russia, 15 different republics joined to Russia for formation Soviet Union. Georgia, Uzbekistan, Armenia, Azerbaijan, and many, many other countries were together. And we, we were called USSR. USSR? Yes. Oh, okay. uh, yes. Uh, the Soviet nations. But it was the country without religion, you know? No religion, no God, no church, nothing, only science. And all kinds of buildings connected to different kinds of religions were destroyed or some other institutions were organized in them. Shops, schools, theaters, cinemas, storages, clubs, libraries, everything, even stables, even bus houses and hospitals, but not church. And this church again was transformed into storage. Storage is a place for keeping military weaponry because it's a military city here. But when museum moved, museum began to use everything for its purpose. That's why this is a branch of our museum. You see these very interesting stone fragments mm -hmm. brought different places from Varzia, from other provinces here, yes? They are, you see the cross, yeah. because they were done in Christian times. And you know that Georgian alphabet is among those 14 alphabets uh, famous all over the world. And mm -hmm. since 2016, Georgian alphabet as independent way of development is taken by UNESCO as unique style of writing form. That's why we are very proud of it. Right, yes. As well as Georgian wine. Maybe you know that Georgian yes. wine is the first of the 
according to archaeological excavation, this is the fact. 8,000 years ago, my ancestors, they grew grapes, they ate grapes, and it was so delicious, so tasty, that they decided to make wine, and they did it. That's why we are the first who had wine. And Georgian wine is also taken into uh, the list of UNESCO. Uh, this is Ason Tavruli, the first style of Georgian writing language. You know, there is some very interesting and strange moments. Out in, in our first script, all 38 letters were capital, big letters. Mm -hmm. We did not have small letters. Now we have the modern form of style of writing. Style, yes, the third stage, and we have only small letters. <laughs> we don't have cap that's why it is very difficult for, uh, for our school children to learn Russian, English, other European languages because they all time forget to, to begin the sentence with the capital. Because I teach Russian at school, uh, and I know that uh, <laughs> it is a big mistake for us for teachers. But it is not tradition in Georgian language. That's why they make these uh, mistakes. Now let us see. This is the uh, uh, brought from Bardia with the information about King Tamar. You will hear uh, this information about King Tamar. Bardia. That's why I say just very short uh, uh, history. She was the only woman king. We had queens, but she was king because she was oh. very brave. A uh, very brave king. During her reign, Georgia really was very strong and very united country, the biggest country. And a great number of new reforms were uh, carried out, and the first form of parliament was formed, called uh -huh. Arabi in Georgia, yes? And she gave this province to generals of her armies for their military heroism, yes? Shalva Ivane Achal Tsicheli, brothers received not only power but also their family name after the name of the city called Citizens of Achal Tsiche. It is an uh, original uh, fragment, beginning of the 13th century. This is our fireplace, look very beautiful ornament on its surface, you see. Uh, what can I say here? Uh, uh, symbolically, for Georgian tribes, the sun, the sun. Was the, uh, it was the worship to the sun, to mother. Because for Georgians, the sun and woman are one and the same. Why? You know? Because everything beautiful and, and nice is connected to us. We are givers new life. Mother gives new life. And the sun, every morning, gives us the chance to begin our new life. That's why we have the poetry and we say the sun is our mother, the moon is our father, and these little stars, our sisters and brothers. So you see all members of Georgian family together. This is foundation. For the first time there was a tree of life. But later this tree of life was changed into cross when we converted to Christianity and Christianity made some corrections in the pagan pagan system of uh, symbolism. Uh, deer, you see this beautiful antlers, yes? And snake. Deer is good and snake is bad. Really? Yeah. Uh, but where is the good? There always must be the bad because it is life. The Georgians say the good and the bad are brothers. They, they all time go arm in arm, hand uh, uh, in hand, yes, for us to see this difference and make some choices for us. And the choice is well done here. Very simple solution to this biggest problem. You see, deer kills snake, so the bat kills the bat. The important. Well, it was cool. It was uh, madrasa, Muslim school. It was tradition. Each church had its temple, and no matter to what religion it belonged. In our case, it was the mosque, and the mosque had its madrasa, school, and library. 
and later this library was taken to Russia and still it is kept in Russia in the city of St. Petersburg in the Museum of Hermitage. For the first time it was just exposition, it was visible for everyone. But today this is archive material and only some kind of sciences, uh, scholars can use the material for their working, for their researching. Now I offer you to go to that upper uh, point. Are you ready? That was the residence for rulers. They lived there, there they had their, their jail, their prison for Christian slaves because mid ages, very very unhappy time for people. There were special markets for slaves. Slaves were taken from everywhere to sell to other countries. Mm, yes? yeah. And uh, Christian children brought from Georgia, kept here after taken to Batumi and to Istanbul to be sold. Beautiful girls for harems and the brave boys as fighters. And we meet the traces of Georgian soul fighters everywhere in Europe. Mostly they uh, served in the armies of Napoleon in France. They were in Egypt. They even reigned the uh, Egypt. Uh, I just want to take you to the balcony, you feel there, to overlook the place okay. we passed.